I'm, I'm, it's been a real um, mad thing looking back on all of these years that have gone by so fast. And uh, one of the guys that was really instrumental for me, really in trying to remain underground, of being pulled by the record company to do what I was doing, is the infamous Carl Dillinger. And uh, he's joining me today, and um, he's in a very rare situation. Me and Carl, we're going to shoot the breeze a little bit. And uh, I've got him right here now. So, uh, Carl, what are you up to, mate? <laughs> yeah, I'm good, man. Just wanted to be on the studio one, rebuilding the studio, a bit of decorating, a bit of everything, man, all rounder at the moment. So what have you been doing with this lot? I mean, you've been keeping busy. I mean, to be honest, at most times, of all the people that could be shouting from the houses about d &B and and having the biggest, the biggest weight, weight in this thing, it's been you, but you're one of the quietest, most humble geezers out there. I mean, I remember doing the, the shoot for, for the Heads album, you know, for the, for the whole metal tin, for Platinum. Trying to get to that shoot we did in that Lab of Grove, it was a nightmare. It's going to get you down for that, just to get a phone. Yeah, I hate anything, <laughs> anything video related or anything like that. I'm terrible, yeah. I don't know what to say. As soon as, the, as, soon as that camera comes on me, I'm like, I'll just freeze. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it's been amazing. I mean, it's been amazing. It's been amazing. I mean, when the... Even with the boys, with SP, and when SP and Jube get started on on dubs that never got released, and of course, half the time you don't even realize how many dats went out there. But my experience of you was when it, when I heard the Bat Fink tune, you know, the Bat, you know, kind of the the, the, the one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Learning tracks, man, learning, isn't it? Part of the learning stage, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I came to see you on the main drag going out to Brixton. I remember going to your flat there, big high ceiling. And listen to a few bits and saying, look, would you think about doing some stuff on Metalheads? And of course, you know, fast forward, getting blessed with, I mean, you know, Angels Fell as an EP to this day has been seminal for the label. And literally, I watched Blade Runner, the original, yesterday. I, and it was like, as soon as the samples start coming on, I'm like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It was one of them, the era of where we could, we could go out and say literally anything. Um, and it was beautiful. But I think... You know, the scene has been really good to us and kind to us. And I think in hindsight, looking back, you know, Timeless was a big experience of, and a big part of my coming of age. That's what the album was about for me. It was a coming of age album. Whereas Sam's Return was about my addiction and, and you know, the lamenting for the mother, which no one was going to get. I was always going to get crucified for that album, always. Um, but I stand by my work as, as a true artist in that respect. But Timeless, Timeless, I mean, I started talking to you after the release on heads the idea of of you doing seventh seal and if i remember rightly quote me on this i came down to your other place it was going down the hill it had that mad drain remember that drain? You, <laughs> you had that that drain oh, it was next door neighbor's drain that next door neighbor i'm like hey. terrible oh, no. <laughs> you Is went it, uh... coming, mate, coming but yo you've got to excuse me <laughs> oh, mate do you remember that we were not we, we were laughing about it but he was like, mate, I remember going in, you had about four air pressure in the seats, I mean. And he was like spraying them up and then you shut all the doors and we get into the living room and it was done, it was wicked. Yeah. I remember that living room because you had it all set up. And I think when we started rolling out, um, you know, Seventh Seal, and I remember clearly on the, on the mod wheel, when we went, we went, I want to go stereo left and right. And we, 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 we sampled the track back to ourselves and had it going left and right on the mod wheel. Do you remember that? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was pretty mental because I thought, and, and there was that one thing where the sample of the flute played an octave higher and he went, Yeah, we, it was a mistake, weren't it? <laughs> it was a complete mistake. That. We were like, oh, no, that sounds all right. I remember that. That sounds all right. It was one of them like, <laughs> Sometimes you make a little mistake, you're like, oh, what's that one? That sounds all right. That's right, yeah. <laughs> and it was do that, that one every now and then. Yeah, yeah, and that was what it was. It was like in, in the high of it, for me, being able to get blessed with even sitting by you and working. Because I was, you know, always over the shoulder of another guy engineering. And of course, I'd work with Digo, work with Mark. You know, and yeah, I was yeah. always out of my comfort zone. You know, Mark Rutherford and those guys. But I was always out of my comfort zone, especially with people that were rolling at d &B that had been a thoroughbred in the sense of what you'd done. So I was nervy. I didn't seem like I was boisterous, but I was nervy still because it was a thing that was sitting there going, what's the ideas, what's the sounds? And of course, we had Justina's pads and all that kind of stuff, which really worked well with the track, with the intro, because it was that really mad intro of having that. Because remember, we, we did that. It was it was just a really great experience. But what was, yeah, it, like yeah. you, what was it like for you, that experience of, you know, obviously... Yeah, I, I don't, I've, not, I've only worked with a few people, uh, ever worked with a few people. So it's like, 
it was a uh, your energy levels on a whole different level and it's i've never worked with anyone like you before it's like a rocket going off in the fucking studio <laughs> fucking light it up and let it fucking watch it fucking let's blow doesn't that mean that's g all through in it but yeah i've never worked with anyone like you before man so that was madness but no we, the energy levels were high obviously and we and we come out with some fucking magic man do you know what i'm saying yeah the strings everything your fucking hand movements you're like you can you can you're contouring the strings with your fucking hands you're telling me what to do do you know what i mean that's just you all the way through man yeah, but I think that was, it, when I think about them times in a really lamenting way, you know, when we look back on life, look at that, being able to manage to kind of engage with someone like that and we were on this level of doing it, you know, it was, I mean, I think about when we did that, you know, this is a bad. For me, when I listened to the way, you know, the pass from Justina, the ba-bang, ba-bang, bang-bang, it was really crusty. And the way that the pass, and the way it moved, but the drums, the little flicks you do, those little edits, a lot of people couldn't get that. Could they weren't at that level of editing at that point? Yeah, you know, yeah, you know even yeah. Dave or Martin would roll out and they would lay a three or four breaks, but you were fl you were flicking them and moving them, and at that time, different level, mate. I mean, and and I, I think it, you know that was for me really important, you know, and and I think that the album wouldn't have been complete if it wouldn't have been for them two tracks. Because I know it sounds pretty mad, but from an underground perspective, you think about what we were doing, you know, Randall left the answer phone message. You know, well, fuck, man, what are you doing, man? You know what I mean? You know, it's always thinking about a fucking album, man. You don't want to go out anymore. Because I just, I just locked off with the album. Locked off, yeah. You, got, you, got going, you went in the zone, didn't it? That's and right. I went in the zone with it. But I mean, of course, we, later on, we went on to do great things because obviously I got to sign you to London. Yeah, you know, that's right. For your, for your album. And as, as much mm -hmm. as you on heads, I think you had to do your own thing. And I think that album... Yeah. As far as bangers are concerned, I mean, every track on the album on Cybertron is just like later. Yeah, yeah. Dance floor, dance floor album. It worked. It does what it said on the tin, basically. Yeah. You know what I mean? Bangers, bangers, loads of bangers. <laughs> but you've, you've always done that. What's, I mean, what's, what's, what's your, what's your take on that? I mean, you've just done your thing. And like you dance, said, right? Get people to dance. That's it. Get, bang it. Get, get fucking, get the drop right. Smash it through and just get, get people to move, innit? Basically. Yeah, that album. I mean, that for me was what did what did that. I mean, Timeless was a different, was a concept album. Of course, you're you're a completely different artist, obviously. Me, you know what I mean. You're more into, you're all round everything. You're touching, you're emotional. You know what I mean. You're taking people on, on through different textures of strings and everything, and different emotions. You're going to de different levels of depths. You know what I'm saying? So, with my thing's more always been more just like dance or bang. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. What was for me? I think the idea of when we did when we when we did those tracks that, that what is the like you said the balance of that album had everything. And I mean, the one thing I remember, you know, even, even Rob was technically gifted in the sense, he had a lot of the software that was, you know, right up front. You know, we're, look, we're dealing with mess of files when no one had mess of files, how you could move and chop through and gate stuff. You know, we were still chopping up in a really mad way and putting it through the keys, you know, and doing stuff, but you could do stuff with mess of files that were different. The way of audio, you know, when you first put audio on the screen is audio, I mean, what, you can stretch it and move it around. It was like, wow, that was, that was gonna be a whole visual thing. That was like, wow, you can see it on the screen as audio. So I think what we achieved is the whole scene as a general. I always say that timeless belongs to us. It belongs to the people. It belongs to the, you know, we were all, it was part of that whole thing from Riders Ghost to, to all those things that influenced the album. And you think about Saint Angel was made way before the album came out. It was, you know, it was the idea of re working with Reinforce and Digo and getting their flavors on the album too, with Mark and Digo, with, you know, with, with, with the idea of, um, you know, of, of those tracks that we did with Angel and you and me was getting that other, other flavour on and, and a, little, a little bit raw. But I mean, I always remember you saying about the idea, because I remember when Playful, we had the sampling screen on the 3000 of scrolling the snake on Timeless. And you always spoke about that. It was, it was kind of, for us, it was very cutting edge as, 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 as technical as we could get, being the most untechnical guy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was especially uh, the spine in, in uh, Inner City Life, man. The, the spine thing with the, with the hi-hat loop. Man. <laughs> when you play that to me, it ripped my head off. I was like, fucking hell, do you know what I'm saying? Such a simple thing, but the way to think of that back then and then pan it and try and contour it and get it in a way so it actually moved around, around the fucking room, do you know what I mean? Like a fucking snake. It was fucking amazing at the time. I mean, the concept then, and I've been listening to it now, it, it sounds like a normal album. But it sounds like a summertime that I remembered, you know, a winter time I remembered. It's, it's that idea of what that music was. And, and I've, you know, I'm, spoke to, I'm going to be speaking to Randall 
you know, I spoke to Groove about, you know, speaking to Randall, because obviously Randall took the cassette, the whole 21 minutes and played it to him. And he just, he just sat there and went, what the fuck? It's just, it's just the whole concept of it. But I think what was even more important for me was not necessarily the finished thing. It was the fact of being blessed to work with you. But after that, I don't even remember this. Do you remember Bowie? David Bowie came to the came to your gaff. Do you remember? Yeah, he came to my gaff. I remember that day. Yeah, <laughs> you were like, "Don't bring him here, mate." <laughs> I know. <laughs> but obviously, he was a South London boy. He'd been he'd been around South London. It was, and I remember taking him from the West End in the BMW, and he was shitting himself. But you know, when you think about how many people this music has influenced, mate. The people that pass through, you know, because the note for us, the blue note for us, week in, week out, you and Kevin would be there, you know, you and Lemon D would be there. And it was, I never saw, we never, you know, we, it was a place where we could see everyone at the same time. There was a period of like a couple of years where it was literally every fucking week. And the tunes that got broken there, I mean, Silver Blade getting broken in that, getting, getting that the way that he would get bagged as a tune. How Ryder would bag it. And that, that intro has always been, where the, where the fuck is it with that delay? You know, with the little, on the rip shot, you're like, yeah, yeah. I clang that tune. <laughs> so yeah, the, when it dropped just before, yeah, just before the drop, I know, I know. It's only when I started to DJ after that, I realized, ooh, I should have done that a bit differently. It's a bit of a hard <laughs> one. <now. laughs> yeah, I realized that after, when I play it now, I'm like, ooh. You lot must have been struggling with that one, do you know what I mean? <laughs> well, that's what he was. I felt like I felt, but I saw Groove, you know, Groove's little stabby fingers, but I saw him, I saw him in, you know, you, you, know, you didn't want to touch him. You didn't want to go, you know, when it was certain man would like certain, certain things. Wait, I'm wait, like, wait. Right, mate, wait, don't you go anywhere near him, mate. You're going to pop his teeth out, I'm telling you. You know what I mean? And that's what I loved. Bang the whole thing out, that's right. That's what I loved about Blue Note, man. Best club night of all time for me. Really? Stop. That and Rage. No, Rage as well. Them two nights there. They're both different things, obviously. Both different things. Rage and your Blue Note sessions are the best club nights of all time, as far as I'm concerned. I think a lot. Of it, it was a catalyst for a lot of other stuff, but I think that the, the, the tunes that got broke and the energy yeah. that would happen... Cutting in edge. That's what I'm talking about. Both of those clubs were platforms for cutting edge music. Do you know what I mean? So... You know, we've grown up listening to everything, man. So it's a, it's a whole. It would never, I, I don't think it will ever happen again in history for me. I don't. I don't think it will. It's never going to happen again because of what we've grown up listening to. The, 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 the uh, eclectic palette that we've grown up on. Do you know what I mean? Of all styles of music, it's just that time in 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 a, at that time of the birth of all them different styles. Do you know what I mean, M -m mixing together. Do you know what I mean? That merge, that merge of all them different flavors coming together. Yeah, it was weird because I said to Groove the other day, there's only one man that ever made a tune outside of this thing that really had the ranks that never came from DMB. And it was it was Ted Todd Terry, Jungle Blackout. Well, I remember when that got drawn out in there and it was like everyone's looking at each other going, cancel it out. It ain't Cole. It ain't Lemmy. It's not Adam F. It's not, you know what I mean? It was like, who made this fucking tune? And Fabio joined it out and just destroyed the gaff. Do you know what I mean? It's like the tunes that would level people. And when, when you know, when digital come with this thing, you know what I mean? And, and you know, and, and then, you know, them digital and spirit. Oh, the very time I'd hear the hangman Gray get rocked, get absolute killers, absolute killers. Killers. Do you know what I mean? Foltec would draw out, you know, you'd hear that oh, one. Oh, come on. <laughs> I remember hearing, I think I heard Groove drop something like, it was something like Still Life remix on the back of like, on the back of um, Boomerang, Graham or Convoy, Matrix, when it first came oh, out. Convoy, killer. Yeah, convoy. What's one of the most one of the most horrible tunes for me of all time in terms of the genre? So what Crazy. do you I mean? The musical journey that you said. I think you're right. It can never happen again in history. No, no, that's for sure. Um, and I think the idea of Bowie coming to the club. I mean, everyone went to the club. Spice Girls. They just ended up just ended up. I mean, being down there and actually getting left alone. To be honest. Because the clientele yeah. were, were, were so different. We would, I mean, I remember at one point we had yard food on a Sunday night. A few board games up. Yeah. Christian running around off his chicken. chicken and that, rice and peas. <laughs> <Bit of jerk. laughs> Do you know what I mean? Belly four. Belly Perfect. Four. I'd be like, right, yeah. I've got an eight for gear coming down. I'm lovely. Everyone else is smoking their weed. I'm going to be off my tits for the night. 
Um, I mean, yeah. and, there's, and there's sweat in that place. And I think the one thing for you, which I think was synonymous with your music, I got to hear your music to the fullest in stereo. When Troy worked that sound, when Eskimo Noise worked that yeah, sound. Eskimo, yeah, you got the right, you got the sound right in there. Definitely. You know what I mean? And the only time the sound's ever been right in a club was when you did obviously mass, because you put your own sound in. You but you were killing people. Yeah, that's a whole different concept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a hurting bass one, isn't it? You know what I mean? Troy killed it in there, man. In the, he got it just right. We was in there every week, so he had to, but he got he got it nice in there. The balance was nice in there, it was heavy and crystal clear. Do you know what I mean? Done a great job in there with that one. And I, I think I think I was I was speaking to Groove about you know I think the crowning moment I, and again something that could never happen in this day and age is when Trenton bought the gold disc down. The album had gone gold. We got a K Cat. Turn the lights on, and it was like we've gone gold, guys. And we've done it. And then right lights off. Let's have it. I mean, where does that happen in club culture? It's it's just for us. It's it's just one of those things that just never happens. And I think celebrating what this music has done for us all. I mean, it's, it's cha you know, changed my life a long time ago. And, and I mean, we're suckers for it. I mean, drum and bass people, producers, engineers can make any other type of music. But the other way around, it just doesn't work like that. No, that's right. Not a lot of people can come in and do it and get it right. That's right. You know, and yet we're the, you know, been at the bottom of the ladder for a long time. <laughs> you know, we were like, which, which I always say to Groove, the Lorty, the him and, him and Fabio, had playing outrage and seeing everyone move and doing different things. They always champion underground British music. And, yeah. and hearing Groove drop St. Angel uh, or, and, and Fabio dropping Sinister, because when Sinister used to drop a Blue Note for me and at Rage, that was kind of like the, the for me that that was that was the cry, that was the thing for me. That was it. It was like, yeah. I'm, done. Yeah. I'm done. I'm done. What are you doing? Does Kevin still have the studio next door to you? Is it still you and Yeah, Kevin? he's still there. Yeah, we're both still there. Same building. Just, you know, living life and, you know, just, I'm, I'm, as I said, I'm in, the, I'm in the progress of redoing the whole studio, man. So just rebuilding it all to a professional level for the first time. It's always been just cheap gear. We got around it because that's what we could afford at the time was, obviously the samples were good, but all the desks we're using were cheap little uh, soundtracks, desks and everything. Do you know what I mean? So the stuff has never been high end. We've got a great sound out of it, but nowadays, not nowadays, but now I've got to the point where I want to actually rebuild it all bit with professional gear and have a go, do you know what I mean, with the high-end stuff and just get the, the highest quality possible, basically, do you know what I mean? So, with the situation now with rebuilding the studio, are you going to be like, have you been producing stuff that you're not playing out? Have you been... Yeah, yeah, producing stuff I'm not playing out, yeah. Right, and are you going? Are you doing? Are you going all round and doing 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 down tempo, doing D and B, doing experimental? What what is your? I want to do a bit of everything, yeah, because I've never done. I've never really made a body of work that's expressing all all, all my different uh, loves of music. Do you know what I mean all the different stuff that I love? So I want to do that for the first time. First time, because obviously I usually just go for the bounce or bang bang. I want to do a bit of everything, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I did the dance floor thing as well, but I wanted to express, you know, I want to express myself differently, definitely. But it was the time back then, you know, Cybertron needed to happen because I think that that really kept, I mean, that put a lot of food in a lot of people's plates. You got to understand, club, the clubbing became, when the album came out, everyone's playing it, everyone's going out, everyone's raving hard. But I think now we're a lot older and I think that, that maybe that's the time for you to do that and, 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 and you know, do that concept vibe that you can do. It's, different, it's a different world now with the way the streaming is and, I mean, I don't even know if clubs will ever be clubs again, you know, in the way that they... Yeah, yeah. That's a scary thing, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, of what's been your hardest thing with this lockdown thing with COVID and, and all this stuff? It's just weird, man. The whole getting your body clock back into... Uh, it's been nice being, being able to get up to, uh, like six in the morning. I mean, you get up early every day anyway. You're like a rocket. You wake up. But for me, it's always been a struggle getting up early. So the fact that my body clock's moved back to, to like commercial times now, like everyone else, that's fucking weird. I'm waking up at 6.30 in the morning and shit for the first time in my whole life. Wow. Matt, we used to get in at 6 o'clock. Yeah. You always get up early, though. You're fucking... I mean, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> well, it's, it's cool getting old. Brainstorming at fucking 6 in the morning. It's getting old, man. That's, That's all it is. That's all it is. But I, I just think that, you know, I, I... Look, man, it's just... It's been amazing. I just think that, you know, the, your contribution... I would never have been making music I think a lot of us can say that who are listening to this, that we'd not, a lot of us would not be making music if it wasn't for you. Because a lot, you know, Reinforced and you 
you like know, we've all we've all influenced each other. You influenced me to take it a bit further with the with the more technical side of things and the, the futuristic vibes. You brought that to me. Do you know what I mean? You influenced me on that end of it. So you know, we've all helped. We've all done it. We all influenced each other. I think definitely. You know I mean you're good? You're good at you know drawing things out of people. You influence people and give them that, give them that push and to that edge. You know what I mean, you've always been good at doing that. And you pushed me to an edge and, and brought something out of me that probably wouldn't have come out if it weren't for you. So, you know what I mean? We've all influenced each other, I think. We're blessed. Definitely. We're blessed. I just hope that we can work together in the future, you know, and do something. Um, I mean, off the record, because uh, I'm going to edit this so far, um, you know, I've got, I don't know what you're doing, but I mean, if you, if you want to touch anything on Timeless, you're more than welcome, mate. You'll get paid for it. If, if that's yeah, I'd love to, man. Sea of Tears is one of my favourites on that. All right, listen to me. You've got Pat Matheny influence. I know you love that. So you drew it in, man, with those fucking... It's off the record. It's off the record. If it's something you think you could track or whatever you could do... Yeah. And I mean it, Carl. I'm only going to... This is a one-time offer, mate. It's a one-time deal, because I would not think I was having this conversation with you. I mean it. Yeah. If it's something you can touch... On timeless, I know that the, 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 you can probably duplicate the mail breaks and that stuff. I could probably get anything played that you need for it. You know, if you want me to help you to put that together, but if it, I, I just think you should do something, Carl, because I've only got this one opportunity. The album's going out in December, so we have until September. So, is there anything? Have a think about it. But I'm really serious. All right. Well, let me just touch seven seal again or whatever, but you know, it, that's safe. But I think, you know, it's it's what if there was anything that you thought this is my take on that piece of music, with your mindset to what you're doing now, and if you're gonna stand by your words, I'm not asking you to just go do a DB fucking which will do whatever it is. I'm saying to you, from a seminal album, if you would have a crack at something like that and just go, you know what, G, I'm gonna have a crack at it can go on off further than my ears. You might say, gee, it didn't work out. But I, I think that if you're something like see it is, mate, because I don't know, it might be something because you could you pull it inside out. Yeah. You know, um, and it's and, and it's really weird because I spent a year with zero tolerance, right? King of the remix, love doing little jazz remix, my man works on samples, lovely, great. He's been trying to do sensual for years. And I went, no, 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 not having it. I don't want to fucking kill off. You're not having it to get fucking brownie points for the next bit. Ain't gonna happen. All year I've been beating him up. He's doing, he's doing a whole damn tempo album called Searchlight, which is fucking outstanding. Outstanding, mate. Proper Lilo, Schifrin, Jazz, Fotec. He really, but without the Fotec aspect. Completely on his own thing. Yeah. I told him this is, I started, like he said, start pulling it out of him, mate. This fucking sensual mix. He smashed it to Zero two, you talking about that. He smashed it to bits. He smashed it. The Exiles boy. Yeah, killer. He just came out with his EP. Him and Dom came. I've not heard anything like on that level for a long time. Killed it. Rotten. The music has not been on that level for a long time. Talking about Zero T and Exiles. He took it right to the edge of that. So he went hurt into... Hurt me up with that one. He did hurt me with that one. <laughs> did. I'm not going to lie. did. Personal favourite flavour, that is. He got it to the T as well. Killed it. And the thing about that is it led to all this other stuff. And now he's just bagged sensual. I said, look, turn it inside out. Think of it, think of it inside out as a glove. Pull the glove off, invert it. You're trying to do a, a dance floor tune when it ain't a dance floor tune. It's as, it's, it, it, it has essences of dance floor. If you were playing in a Fabio set at the heat of the moment, you can slip it in and you can slip it out. You get it. But you've got to set the tune up. So he's gone through it and he's pulled out the bass player and he's pulled out his piano player. And I said, don't give it away. So the intro riff, you think, what is this? And then you get it, you think, shit, it's sensual. And that, to me, is worthy of going right, it's cool. Things like Robin Smith, who played the original keys on You and Me. So Robin and me working together. I took all the MIDI information of Timeless with Robin. You know what I'm like, get right in there, take the MIDI information, vintage keys, knock out the Lego bricks of, of all the chord notes that are tripping over each other, smooth it out, We've got a really good bed to build melody on, to bring out the vocals and everything else. Just this, just you and me. He said to me, listen, man, I'm so thankful. Let me send you this. He sent me this classical version of you and me that just had me in bits, mate. Absolute bit. Not even mixed. I said, James, let's just mix the pads. A little bit cloudy here and there. But it's just stunning. I, I, just, I, I laid the vocal down, kind of operatic take, sent it to Echoes. 
Echo's laid down a take on it. I'm like, that's me. Tears down the face. Thank you very much. Job done. But, you know, you getting involved, doing a piece, what's it going to be? Will you have a crack? Yeah, I'd love to. All right. Well, I'll try if I can. I don't think I've got the drums separated, man. All that stuff was really... It's one of them you've got to wing out the sounds. And in terms of getting players, I can get certain players to play things. Not a problem. Re I, replay, yeah. I can get the, the riffs for the guitar replayed. I've got a wicked guitarist who can do that. I've got a couple of people I can choose from, actually, that are really... You've still got all the strings, yeah? I don't think I think I think I may have. No, but I may have. So what I'm gonna do All that is a special bit, you know what I'm saying? Come on. Conversation. Those strings. Yeah, I know. What I'm saying is I'm gonna reverse engineer this because I know that when I start digging on, on a lot of the work that I've got, I know that a certain cause I'll find. And if we ain't gonna find them, it is not meant to happen. But I think that, you know, that's how we work. <clears throat> I think that something like it was unexpected that you say Sea of Tears, and I, I don't know why because obviously, classic. It's probably for me the track that got the most grief, got the most grief out of the album. It got the most, but what man is like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not really, it's, the drums ain't not smashing. Yeah, but you know, not everyone's grown up listening to, you know, to me, that reminds me of Song of Siren or something. I don't know, it's got energies from, from Marshall Jefferson and some, you know, Song of Siren and. and Fallout and things, I don't know, things that were getting played in Rage to me, old house tunes and, you know what I mean? It's just the way you drew out the strings and that and the whole vibe from it, I understood it straight away. Instantly. I loved it straight away. Wow. Well, I think the thing about it as well, it's Mel Gaynor on drums. Mel Gaynor's Simple Minds. I mean, that's a lot of people don't even know that. You know, and Mel Gaynor, we obviously got the studio from him for Rob, so that was a real touch. And of course, he, he actually did the drums for Hand of the Dead Body, the Ice Cube mix. Right, it's the same flavor. If you listen yeah. to the drums, they're both the same flavors. So I'll go back in there. And I guess, I guess what's even more seminal about that piece of music to me, which made this album seminal, is that it's Jamie's voice when he was nine years old in the middle of that piece, and now he's doing double life on homicide. I won't see him till I'm 65. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, you know, it's weird when you're looking back on this kid, you know, what are you doing here, washing away the tears? It's got a double jeopardy for me, a double tragedy in the song itself. The fact of having to come back to Miami, you know what I mean, to bury the stepdad. The naughty one that was. I did not want to come back from Miami. And that's what Miami was. It was Sea of Tears. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, let's let's see what we can do, eh? Let's let's see if we can yeah, work. Yeah. That'll be good. Well, listen, I love you, man, to the bone call. Goes without saying. It's been amazing. And uh, seen for ages, man. It's been a long time, man. It's been a long, long time. And I don't know when I'm gonna see it. So I feel like we're all in a space capsule. Floating out, it's over. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> over. You know what I mean? I, I do miss James being here in the studio because obviously he went back on the last flight, and we've been really, busy, really, really busy with subjective, and that's going really, really well. Um, and we did speak about something which which is off off piste, and uh, any help you need moving forward, we're all good, mate. But it's been a pleasure, mate. It's been an absolute pleasure. You too, man. As always.